Okay, we're back. We're live for the two o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Community Matters on Think Tech. This is an analysis of our Think Tech May survey, which was uh, lockdown snapshots of snapshots of life in lockdown. That's the COVID lockdown. And uh, Catherine Nor and myself, we do this every every month. I guess we do this to analyze the answers here, so you can get a handle. You can learn as we learn uh, from the survey reports. I really like doing these. I think it's very important that we sort of stay in touch with people and, and develop this kind of anonymous mm, testing of how people feel. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Aloha, Jay. Thank you for having me. It's great to be talking about what people are doing. Well, um, <clears throat> snap, snapshots of life, um, uh, during the lockdown is, uh, you know, it's actually during a defined period, you know, in the in the history of the COVID, because I, I, you know, this is this is what was happening before the reopening really got traction. Um, but I think it's very interesting because we may go back <laughs> to lockdown soon enough. So this is useful in terms of appreciating how people how people treated the lockdown at least at that time. So the first question is simple question. Are you working? Why don't you tell me what the answers were? Well, it looks like it looks like um, uh, the majority are working at home. Uh, fifty nine point five seven are working from home and uh, fourteen point eight nine percent are are working in their regular place of work. And uh, uh, there has then those responding, only about 1% were terminated or furloughed, and other was a, uh, around 24%. Yeah, I want to tell you what was in the other. Uh, these are the comments that was in the other, uh, that, that were in the other. One is, a uh, fellow said that he was retired, stopped working three years ago. Another says he retired in December. Another said, I'm working at home and occasionally uh, at a place of work. Another said, I'm retired, retired retired, retired. A lot of people were retired. Yeah. And so you have to take that in, in conjunction with um, the question in general. But I think the lesson, the lesson here is uh, the people who were working, were working at home. Okay. And maybe so, they yeah. need to uh, keep their, their home office uh, in place because they uh, may not be returning to the office for a very long time if this yep. continues. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's go to the next one. This question is, how are you spending your time at home? Um, and there's a bunch of, um, you know, uh, possibilities and you could check more than one here. So what kind of re response did we get on this one, Catherine? Well, we've got uh, working remotely is 70 point, uh, 70%. Uh, doing mm -hmm. volunteer work, 34%. Exercising, 63%, those are people that are probably working and exercising. And then there's some pursuing um, resources or government benefits, those are about uh, close to 11%. There's only about 4% looking for work and there's close to 40% taking care of their family, only about 11% are homeschooling. Um, and then there's about 60% going online, I think everyone does that, but you know, um, that's where that's only 60%. And watching broadcasts online, about 50% or online entertainment. And on the phone, 41%, maybe that's for work or, or other things. And about 40% are doing creative things. Okay, let's look at the individual comments on that. Uh, okay, oops. Okay. Yard work, gardening, planting lots of flowers and veggies, <clears throat> home maintenance, yard work, victory gardening, updating my business website, creating new businesses. That's interesting. So those were the uh, you know the open comments. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, what that tells us, I guess, that a lot of people were working at home, working remotely at home. And that uh, they're good for them. They were doing volunteer work and exercise. They spent a lot of time on going online, and I guess that's not working, but just you know, reading and communicating. 
and uh, there a lot of a lot of people were watching TV yeah. and family. So this is actually tells us that it was it was a healthy time in the in the in the, you know in the context of COVID. This was a pretty healthy time. People were doing a mix of things and the right things. Okay, the next question is what broadcast or online entertainment are you watching here at home in our snapshots of your life in lockdown? <laughs> you want to tell us the answers? Well, the vast majority are watching news and documentaries and movies and entertainment. We only have a little bit watching religion and a very small um, portion watching sports and even fewer that are not watching at all. Yeah, I, I find what's interesting about the bar is that the bar graph is that news and documentaries is more, that's what 82 and change, um, than movies and entertainment. So I have this vision, you know, like in my house, that when the news comes on in the evening or sometimes in the afternoon, depending, everybody's focused on learning what's going on in our in our crazy country. <laughs> but, you know, this may change. I can tell you personally that I was very interested in the news early on and I was glued to it, but I've kind of gotten tired of it and I'm not watching it much anymore. I'm in the same place, Kath. It's so interesting. And maybe, you know, I say to myself, why am I not watching the news as much as I was watching it earlier? And the answer is something like, you know, I've already heard it. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's news, but it's just like it was before. <laughs> yeah, it's not changing much. So I'm seeking out entertainment more than I was before and yeah, yeah. Um, not worried if I miss a day or two of news. Um, I can look at you know today on uh, twitter i just looked before we came on they've uh, they've identified a, a possible new uh virus from pigs in china that could end up being a um another pandemic so you know it i i don't know if i want to hear that <laughs> right well, that's another factor who wants to watch news it's if it's always bad news <laughs> right Exactly. You know, I want some good news. Okay. I want to have kittens and puppies. Okay. And I can, those are I got all. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I want to tell you the, the open comments now. Uh, somebody said um, he or she watches me TV and start TV. That's interesting. Um, then YouTube. Hmm, interesting. Uh, at least one person. Uh, and here, oh, here's another one YouTube for kids. And here's a third one, YouTube, topics of interest on YouTube. You can learn an awful lot on YouTube and you can watch all of Think Tech on YouTube, YouTube right. also. Cooking shows, my wife does that, a lot of cooking shows. Here's one, mostly free cultural live stream. I guess that's on, on, the, on the web. Uh, opera, dance, music, and lessons. <laughs> we're, having a, we're having a dance uh, show an uh, India Bollywood dance show this afternoon at 4 p.m. <clears throat> anyway, uh, culture is good. Boy, this more, it goes on. Positivity and mediational workshops, one person said. Strike back. I don't know what that means. Do you know what it means, strike back? No idea. <clears throat> I don't know what that is. Uh, How-to videos. And indeed, uh, we know that, um, uh, we know from Google and YouTube that how-to videos are the most popular videos on, on uh, YouTube. Ah, here's one guy who said, Think Tech Hawaii. Good for him. All right. Uh, here's another one that said, Stephen Colbert, podcasts. Here's another one that said, Think Tech Hawaii. Wow, that's happy. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff on there and it's, uh, it's all useful. And some of it is really cutting edge too. Okay. <clears throat> so what do we learn here? We learned it movies and entertainment and news and documentaries are the way people watch not so much religion that's interesting it, it maybe it's a it's a sample of the viewing audience anyway you know right <clears throat> okay what are you this is question four what are you doing um online and here again people could select all that apply can you give us the answers Okay, well, obviously, as you see here, vast majority are email and video conferencing. I'm 
I believe many people learned all about Zoom during this period of time. Uh, email was 95% approximately, and video conferencing about 85%. Social media, about 53%, working remotely, 68%, applying for benefits, about 9%, and shopping, about 45%. Newspapers and newsletters, about 80, 48%. And um, education, about 38%. Magazines and books, 19%. And games, 17%. Research. That is so interesting, research. It's, it's, a, it's a, an open category, but you can research anything. Maybe that's the same thing as, uh, no, it's not the same thing as shopping. It's, it's like, uh, it's, uh, what's the word? It's, it's just, it's um, surfing the net. It's what it is, sure. research. Uh, or maybe asking questions about COVID. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, actually, you that's get, probably it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that people are, uh, they're checking on things like the other day I researched the um, where all the cases were in the world and the percentage ver you know of cases versus population and all of that and I'm sure others are doing similar things so that they can make decisions on their own rather than relying on uh, news sources. Yeah and and actually I find this interesting is that newspapers and newsletters are um less than social media um and uh less way less than research so i guess what that tells us I, I, let me jump to a conclusion here is that newspapers and newsletters are, are losing ground against other ways people spend their time getting news sure. whoa then and then you shouldn't wonder why newspapers are firing staff and some closing you know Sure. And, you know, um, when I get my daily newspaper, it's pretty thin. I would say that um, what I can get online and and uh, on, you know, news channels is a little bit more significant. Yeah. Well, I guess my my general uh, view of this is that people have a diversity of interests and, and they are doing lots of different things online some of them maybe more than they should and other other things maybe less than they should but um every every one of the alternatives that we gave them on the survey had some response applying but <laughs> applying for benefits was was probably the, the smallest category <laughs> and you know i think that's reflective of our audience too and who um responded to the survey because we do have a large unemployment rate, and I don't think that the results do necessarily reflect that. Um, but at least we know that there are some that are, you know, that do respond that are actually within that category and providing information about what they're doing. I would have expected, and maybe it's more efficient than I think, I would have expected more on uh, shopping. Although we have yeah. a healthy, healthy percentage, it's 45% or so on shopping <clears throat> but you know as time goes by we have all found that shopping is pretty efficient when you buy from a you know a credible source and um you know it, you don't really have to leave your house to shut but you know they're they're delivering everything now um long drugstore delivers um safeway delivers um i keep hearing about these stores that are delivering um that you know uh, and of course, Best Buy delivers. So you can sit at home and order things online and live your whole life that way. Um, that's where it's coming to. I think some of these things will s survive the COVID time. Although some people want to get out of their house and the only way they can really do that is go to the store. So, I, I you know, it's kind of a mix. And sometimes it takes, during the COVID period, the, you know, some of the period of time, it was very, lengthy getting something delivered from a farther place and sometimes the waits were much longer if it wasn't something essential yeah true and the stores have gotten into it now uh and they they're more efficient at it and it's quicker here's some um, of the comment responses 
looking for talent. I'm not sure what kind of talent. Upgrading my website. That sounds like the last answer. YouTube, submitting articles to magazines, news channels, etc. Oh, this, this tells you a lot. Update on COVID. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's what a thinking user, a thinking online user would do. He would he would check out the latest. He would see what's what's going on. Although the truth is, when you're talking about um, therapeutics and vaccines, there's a lot of noise out there, but no hard copy. Right. Uh, and oh, this is interesting. And one person, he checks out the U.S. Department of Education and the Hawaii DOE. I don't fully understand that, but that's that's what he was or she was uh, spending time at. Okay, good. Varied interest. Okay, our next question: uh, Who are who are you video conferencing with? <clears throat> so, what are the answers on that, Catherine? The vast majority are friends, family, and coworkers. Um, friends and coworkers are at about fifty-nine percent equal. Uh, family about 48% and healthcare professionals about 15% and then tech support professionals which sort of cracks me up is about 9% and then um, what was interesting about that is zero said no one I don't like uh, to video conference so uh, that tells you something and then uh, another and the other one is no one I don't have the equipment to video conference that was about 3% Yet they were able, they were able to respond to the survey. And then other is a very large amount, and that's thirty-eight <laughs> percent. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I'm looking at the no one. I don't like the video conference. Actually, that was zero, zero point zero zero. You see it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now individual responses. Some, you know, comment type responses. Well, there's a lot of them. My Needlepoint Guild members, this person is into Needlepoint, conducting a workshop, um, business, business, whatever that means. Uh, students, I teach college, okay? Rotary Club uh, and BNI chapter. Mm. Uh, I don't know what BNI is. You know BNI, BNI? Um, I actually attended a BNI meeting as a guest. It's a Kind of a referral network type of thing and it's kind of an they do a pretty slick um zoom conference mm -hmm. that is one community organizations this one my hawaii hawaiian language class and then this one industry associations and groups so that really tells us a lot uh, it tells us there's an awful lot of video conferencing going on with an awful lot of people it's actually uh, although it looks like coworkers and and friends are about the same, they're, they're within a, a very sh small tolerance of each other, and family, of course. Um, but there's a lot of other going on, and that's uh, that's interesting. I think people are getting into the habit of using Zoom, where they might be using a phone before, don't you? Mm -hmm. Sure, and I do Zumba on Zoom and exercise on Zoom. So um, that's a big part of what I do on Zoom. Yeah, my wife does hula lessons. I'm not kidding, on Zoom with oh, a class. That's great. And, and, um, and um, she does ukulele lessons too. <laughs> sure. Okay, <clears throat> how are you getting your food? Select all that apply. So what kind of answers did we get there? Um, the majority are going to food stores. Um, and then second to that was takeout. And 84% are going to food stores, 60% going to takeout restaurants, 15.96% um, are getting food from family and friends, and then only about 14% are having groceries delivered, others about 12%, um, and then 11% um, is shopping online and picking groceries up. 10% is getting deliveries from takeout restaurants and zero are getting um, food from a food bank or charity. However, I'm thinking that the reason for that response is because those people are not answering the survey. Yeah, they're not in the, in the, the covered crowd. That's what it is. Correct. Well, I guess, uh, let, me, let me look at the individual comments here. Uh, one second. Uh, there are no individual, wait, yes, there are. 
Yeah, uh, okay, uh, here we go. Gardening. I mostly prepare meals with fresh and some frozen produce and meats. Costco, de depleting the emergency supplies in my pantry and freezer. <laughs> well, well prepared. Um, farmers markets that support local farmers. Uh, uh, supermarket and home cooking. Living with daughter, an excellent cook with three very young kids. Uh, going to food store with limited frequency. Pick and shovel in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Informal bartering, bartering of cooked and baked foods with a neighbor. We have that. Uh, farm to car is one. And wife shops at food stores. Oh, sure. Because yeah. some people, they're responding based on themselves. And maybe someone else in their family is doing that going to the yeah. store or whatever i really i really like in my neighborhood by the way people come around they actually come around and uh, this is old style hawaii style yeah and they and they give you food and it's uh, it's not because uh, you know you actually have to have the food but they just want to be aloha and um, they are i, I really I, love that about people in hawaii that's fantastic and i'm just hoping someone will knock on my door with chocolate chip cookies make a note of that <laughs> home baked of course okay here this is an easy one uh how, how well are you eating well what are the answers on that one Catherine? okay people are saying that they're eating right that's the vast majority and um that's um 78 percent um only 19 percent are eating too much or claim they're eating too much and Two percent, I'm not eating enough, and zero said I don't have enough to eat. And I think that we have a lot of respondents who are very um, they they perceive that they're eating right and don't think that they're eating too much. Right, it's self-interested, isn't it? There's a conflict <laughs> going on. You know, you, if you if you believe that you're eating right, then you'll say you're eating right, but you may not, in fact, be eating right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to know what they're eating. I think they're having probably too many Oreos. Yeah, well, that, this, this actually reminds me of one of those delivery services was a, a neighbor of mine. Um, they, they go online uh, and they, they go on the Safeway website and they order every little thing from Safeway, every little thing, like they would spend an hour in the store doing this. And then um, Safeway delivers every little thing. That's really and, and the, the delivery charge is like minimal. Um, okay. So yeah, this this I think that's coming. Um, if, if, if that is if Safeway can continue to do it. I live okay. next door to Safeway. So um, if I did that, it would be a real cop out. It would be you wouldn't even walking <laughs> to down the block. Yeah. Okay, how much exercise are you getting? What are the answers we got on that one? Okay, most people are exercising every day or every few days. So the exercise every day, people are about almost 44%. Uh, those exercising every few days are 36%. So that adds up to about 80%. So most people are exercising. Then um, you've got about 6% exercising every week and, um, and then about 6% exercising less than weekly, which is not really that much. Um, only 5% are not getting any exercise and, and none uh, were not able to exercise and other is 2%. So you've got a vast majority that are exercising and this tells me that people understand that it's important to exercise and are getting oh. out or, or exercising at home. Yeah, I wonder if they're telling the truth. Um, you know what, I think a lot of them are walking because if you're stuck at home, um, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go out and take a walk and maybe you really didn't do that that much before, but you gotta get out of your house and you can safely go for a walk. So I think a large portion of that 80% are walking. Yeah, that's the magic thing, walking, because everybody can walk, well, listen to everybody, but most people can walk and it's, yeah. it's easy to do and it has such benefits for you, even yeah. slowly. Yeah. And, and indeed, uh, the um, the other comments, uh, the two of them, uh, one says just walking right on point. And the other one says 
got injured. So exercise only a little um, as much as I can because of the industry, but only as can due to injury. All right. Well, it, I think we I think we have some some good numbers on this one. People are exercise. I think they all know that they have to, as a sure. matter of health. It doesn't cost anything, and so this is this is good. We have a what do you want to call it? A healthy minded community. Sure, and uh, we're in Hawaii anyway. The weather is good, and people want to get outside. You probably have people going to the beach and getting in the water too. You know, um, but there's probably others that are actually lifting weights with weights they have at home, those kind of things, or, or bicycling. All right, we have one called, are you wearing face masks? Can you talk about the answers to that? Okay, on this one, um, okay, um, the, I wear a face mask only when I'm outdoors away from home, that's 34%. I wear a face mask when I'm indoors or outdoors away from home, 31%. I wear a face mask away from home only when I think I'm at risk, 19%. Other, 12%. I don't think face masks are necessary, only 2%. I wear a face mask both at home and away from home, 1%. And I have a face mask, but I do not wear them, zero. I wear a face mask but i don't know where i i would wear a face mask but i don't know where to get them zero so yeah. most people are wearing face masks um and in hawaii we do have good compliance with that okay here are the comments um i wear a mask when i go to stores i wear a face mask when i go into stores or public areas with other people since the mask protects others from me i stay home to reduce my risk. Uh, good. Stores and outdoors, another one. And finally, I wear a face mask when shopping and when volunteering uh, at, at a church office. Good. I, I want to um, know how many wear them properly and not wear them under their nose or under their chin. <laughs> you know, that's a really good question. There are a lot of people who, who wear them as, as throat masks. <laughs> Right, right. It doesn't cover their nose or their mouth. Um, sure. And really, really, they should use them properly. It's obvious that you want to cover your uh, mouth and nose both. Otherwise, you're not getting, nobody's getting the benefit, not you or the people around you for sure. Okay, we're getting closer to the end now. Next question, have you been ill? Very interesting uh, because, if, you know, if you're, if you're holed up in a lockdown, uh, theoretically, hopefully, you shouldn't be ill too much because you're not trafficking with any antigens. So what were the answers on this one? The vast majority, no, they haven't been ill, 91%. Um, there is 5% uh, who have had an illness other than COVID. Um, uh, I've been hospitalized with an illness other than co coronavirus, zero. I've been ill with coronavirus, zero. I've been hospitalized with coronavirus, zero. I've been ill, but I don't know if it's coronavirus, 1%. I've been hospitalized, but I don't know if it was coronavirus, zero. Other, 2%. Okay, and other is, um, you know, there's two responses here uh, worth mentioning. One is I did go to the emergency room in February with breathing issue and congestion. We don't know if that was COVID, but I doubt it because if, if it had been COVID, that person would have said so. This is an anonymous survey. Um, and the other one said uh, he was, uh, she was sick with flu-like symptoms in January, in January. Again, no reference to whether it was COVID. Uh, doubt it was. Okay, next one. Has someone in your household been ill? Same question, but now we're asking about anyone else in the household. What are the answers to that one, Catherine? The vast majority, um, no, no one has been ill in their household, that's 89%. Uh, only 5% said someone in the household has had an illness other than coronavirus. And then 1%, someone in the household had been hospitalized with an illness other than coronavirus. 1% said that someone in their household had been ill with coronavirus 
and some and then zero for someone in my household has been hospitalized with coronavirus, zero for someone in my household has been ill, but I don't know if it was coronavirus. Um, and uh, um, three was three percent was other. So we've got uh, mostly no one had been ill. Okay, so now we have one of those uh, comments. Uh, he or she says, uh, so I mentioned, this, this is probably the person who answered the, the previous question with a comment. So I mentioned I was ill in February for five weeks, but no one else in my household has been sick. That's why uh, I am the only one in my household. Okay, well, then that question doesn't really apply. And the last one is I, I live alone, same thing. Okay, let's go a um, little further here. Question 12, have you been tested for coronavirus? What are the answers on that one, Catherine? Um, okay, the vast majority um, was, I have no symptoms and have not been tested. That was 86%. Um, those who were tested and found negative were 4%. Those who were tested and found positive, zero. Um, and then those who were had symptoms and had not been tested were 4.3%. Those who were tested and um, don't know how to get tested, 1%. And only 2%, I don't want to be tested. Other was 2%. Hmm. So the people who don't want to be tested, that's very interesting. Uh, and, and just a fraction, I want to be tested, but I don't know how to get tested. It's, you know, you don't know this uh, the moment you're born. It's not in intuitive. You actually have to do some research and make some calls and call health providers. That's how you find out. I wonder, what do you think? Would, this, would the answer to this question be the same today, um, given what the government tells us is a, a greater and easier access to testing? Um, I could get tested uh, half a block from where I live because there's a testing center. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's that hard, but I don't know if they test everyone. Um, I think you have to have a basis for being tested like anything. If you want an MRI of your of any part of your body, you have to have something that warrants or justifies the MRI. Mm -hmm. Same with x-rays. You can't just get tested for anything uh, for no reason. It's, yeah, it's it costs money. costs money. Well, and, uh... It's also not appropriately, it's not reasonably medically uh, appropriate. I mean, there's, there are standards in medicine and it doesn't fit the standard if you don't have the symptoms. That may not be the case everywhere. I think there are many places in the world where if, you, if you're anxious, you can go get tested. Sure. Um, okay, the, the comments, I have, been, I have been tested for antibodies and I'm awaiting results. That's, that's very avant-garde. And another one is, I have not been tested, um, but would like to. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, that person ought to, ought to find out more about it. Um, there was a piece on television the other day about the antibody test. It was this is on 60 Minutes just yesterday. Uh, there was, a, you know, there are a lot of scams in the antibody testing. Everybody wants them. Um, they're supposed to tell you if you have the antibodies that are generated by the virus as a result of the virus, and they're not reliable. Some very small percentage of them are reliable, but most of them are not quite reliable. And it was a very interesting piece. It left you with, uh, do I really need this? You know? Sure. Um, because you can't be sure. And it doesn't tell you with any great degree of accuracy whether you have the disease. It only tells you whether you have the antibodies that would have resulted from the disease. Um, and you don't know how long those antibodies would work. Okay, we have, uh, we have oh yeah, I have some comments on that one. <clears throat> Handling it, but increasingly frustrated over irrational and inflexible restrictions. I guess this person really wants, oh wait, Sorry, wrong question. Ah. Okay, let me ask the question first. The question we're dealing with is, how is your state of mind? Can you give, can you give us the answers on that, Catherine? 56% are feeling fine. 20, about 29% say I'm handling it. Only 12% say I'm troubled, but I'm still okay. 
zero said that I think I need to talk to a professional and only 2% said other. So most people are either feeling fine or handling it. And other one said handling it, but increasingly frustrated over irrational and inflexible restrictions. I guess he's talking about government or maybe business restrictions. And another one said, this is interesting, being very candid with us. He said, I've been depressed and frustrated, not able to see family on mainland. Uh, and and um, I can't read the word. And old friends, depressed. Um, so that, that makes sense. I sure. sympathize with that. Yeah. So, I, I, you, know, you, you know, one of the issues is, okay, maybe it's better, maybe it's worse, your state of mind. But 100% should say it's different. My way of looking at the world is different, <laughs> sure. whether it's better or worse. Okay, question 14, I think we're almost, we have 15 all together. So let's, let's be, let's finish them. Uh, 14, do you have uh, enough money to continue to shelter in place? What are the answers on that one? Okay, those who have enough for one month or more are 7%. Those who have enough for two months or more are 6%. Those who have enough money for three months or more are 12%. Um, those who have enough for more than three months are 54%. Um, those who ran out of money when they lost their job were zero. And those who haven't had money for some time are zero. Other is about 19%. I think the vast majority um, are people that are working and can continue to get money. And so this doesn't reflect more savings, but the fact that they, um, they're working and, and they can continue to um, live off of what their income is. Mm -hmm. Okay, here are the comments. I still have my job, as you suspected. Um, I'm receiving a paycheck uh, as an essential business. Same thing. Um, I limit my spending in general. That's very interesting. So tighten your belt kind of approach. And here, uh, I'm on social security. I periodically sell a domain. I guess that means a domain name. I just sold microsegmentation.com for $4,000. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what you should be doing. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's like money in the bank, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, people have interesting, you know, what do they say? Uh, necessity breeds invention. Okay, how this is question 15. How has your life changed since you started sheltering in place? Can you give us the answers? Uh, the vast majority is surprising. It is my life is pretty much the same. That's 44%. Um, my life has gotten worse is 21.5%. My life has gotten much worse, only 1%. My life has gotten better. Those are those introverts that we've talked about before. That's close to 10%. My life has gotten much better. That's 7.5% and other is 16%. Hmm. Okay, here's, uh, here's the comments. Combination of pretty much the same, but a little worse since we are, hum since we are homebound. And uh, my life is better in some ways and worse in others. And uh, I miss my coworkers. I miss my ergonomically correct workstation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can relate to that. So get one for home, okay? Um, and this is, I have been inconvenienced by having to leave the house to shop for groceries instead of shopping on the way home from work. That's interesting, because <laughs> this person would shop on the way home from work. Huh? Okay, and fi finally, and I, I go with this one, I'm much busier with work. <laughs> and that's where I am. <laughs> sure, yeah, well, it's it's changed our lives. and. For people who enjoy being at home, um, it's there's a lot of benefits. Uh, for those who are can't wait to get away from home and get out, uh, it's more difficult, I think. Yeah. So, Catherine, our next uh, survey starts on the first of July, and again lasts for 15 days. Uh, so, if anybody listening um, has a chance, please go to our. Uh, 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 daily email advisories or our websites, click on the link. You'll be able to take the survey. Uh, it's called um, re Reopening Realities. 
<laughs> and it's about the reopening such as it is. And it'll take you like two or three minutes to finish it. And it's well worth it. So if for no other reason that Catherine and I can discuss it in our next show together, uh, which will be next month. Thank you so much, Catherine. All right. Thank you, Jay. Aloha.